Circular Collider Conference. And together with all of you, we're looking forward to a splendid week of discussions, conversations, dialogues about what might be the future of particle physics. And as you have observed outside, uh, I think we will be accompanied this week by the typical Belgian weather as well. <laughs> Additionally, on the square in front of the hotel, you might have noticed the exhibition, The Code of the Universe. This open air exhibition aims to bring or science or technology to society. And I would say in this case, it brings science and society uh, and technology to effectively, explicitly, the people in the street. On the agenda of the week, you have a lineup of plenary talks, parallel sessions, covering all aspects of the FCC study revolving around the physics, the experiments, the machine design, the technologies, the infrastructure and the civil engineering. And as a highlight, a dedicated session uh, is scheduled on the important economical dimension of the study. And not to forget the other highlights, which is related to the final report of the Horizon 2020 Eurocircle Design Study, essential in our endeavor of preparing the future. I have no doubt that the impressive schedule this morning for the opening session uh, triggered your attention and interest. We have a lineup of the leading minds in science, technology, and policy making. And for the first welcome address, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage Dr. Wolfgang Butcher, who is since about 10 years the Deputy Director General for Research and Innovation in the European Commission. Please. Director General Cianotti, President Van Rompuy, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure for me to be able to join you today to launch the 2019 Future Circular Collider Week. You are all scientists, all connected to the scientific world and supporting it. So no need for me to tell you how important fundamental science is for pushing forward the boundaries of human knowledge in all fields. Let me assure you that the European Commission believes strongly in the role of science in our societies and will continue to defend the role of basic research. Without fundamental research, applied research is not possible. One can only apply what has already been conceived. Fundamental science enable, enables us to redefine concepts, to see the world and ourselves from a new perspective. You have been working for some years now on the design of the future circular collider. You are presenting this week the different elements of your design study. This is a major venture and we are still in the early phases of what will come next in the world of physics. You will be able to describe collectively this roadmap via the update of the European Strategy for Particle Physics, which was recently launched. The European Commission has supported the various scientific communities present here today. The Horizon 2020 Research Infrastructure Program has funded the Euro Cir Circular Collider Project and supported the accelerator and detector communities, which are also connected to the future circular collider efforts via ARIS and the AIDA 2020 project. We have also supported this initiative to the Maria Sklodowska Curie program, another part of Horizon 2020. This program has supported the training of PhDs in superconductors and refrigeration and cooling, cooling infrastructures via East Train. In fact, the program has invested over 72 million euros in training researchers in the area of particle, nuclear, and high-energy physics. 
If you look at how large-scale facilities participate in the Maria Sklodowska Curie actions, CERN and DESI are respectively the second and third recipients preceded only by EMBL. We have also supported the initiative to Europe, through the European Research Council, which is, as you know, funds which provides, as you know, funds for individual researcher-initiated projects. In this framework, 553 grants has been attribute, have been attributed through its panel fundamental constituents of matter for a total amount of almost 1 billion euros. And in fact, two members of the Future Circular Collider Scientific Program Committee have been ERC grantees. European research funding has been a strong force in coordinating and consolidating the European R&D efforts and communities. The European Research Council and the mission-oriented efforts have brought new styles of governance and are having an influence in basic research funding across all member states in general. And Horizon Europe, our next framework program for research and innovation, will of course also have a pillar devoted to excellent basic science, including research infrastructures, Maria Sklodowska Curie, and the European Research Council. This part of Horizon Europe will be funded, we hope, with almost 26 billion euros. As you know, the substance has been already agreed between the European Parliament and the Council, but the amounts available for this funding program depend on the overall agreement of heads of states regarding the next multi-financial framework for the European Union. One proof that we are committed to fundamental science is the increase for the European Research Council by 3.6 billion euros compared to the current budget period this is at least the proposal of the European Commission. At the same time, it is vital that we harness all our efforts in the European Union and globally to help provide answers to the social, economic and ecological challenges the planet is facing. Only by bringing together all our resources can we hope to avert a crisis. It has been said that the next decade will not be like any other we have experienced up to now. Nor, if we fail to act, like any that follows it. This place is a great respons responsibility on all of us to show how we can contribute and adapt our tools and our ways of working and of thinking so we can have a maximum impact. That will be the driving force behind the future European program for research and innovation and many other programs at the European level. We very much look forward for working with you on these challenges and to supporting you as we have done in the past. You are essential for helping us to shape our understanding of the world and future societies. I wish you an excellent week in Brussels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this warm and supportive welcome address. And I would say now from the, the challenges of policy making to the uh, challenges of scientists, I call to the stage our Director General of CERN, Dr. Fabiola Gianotti, please. Good morning. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to say a few words in the uh, opening session of, the, of this FCC week in the presence of uh, President uh, Van Ampoy and other Dr. Buscher and other authorities. Um, I would like to uh, immediately to uh, um, acknowledge and, and thank the organizers of this week. Uh, actually, most of the work is done uh, the week before. Uh, so in particular, Michael, uh, Michael Benedict, uh, Johannes Gudreberg, and uh, Jorgen Dont and their, and their teams. 
Now, if I look back at, the, uh, at last year's uh, LCC week in, uh, in Amsterdam, clearly enormous progress has been made. Uh, a big milestone, uh, the uh, conceptual design report, the CDR has been met. This is a document, you know, a four volume document submitted as an input to the European strategy for particle physics. Uh, I must say that that document uh, really uh, reflects a project that is quite mature already at this stage with a um, uh, deep exploration of the physics uh, potential, the great physics potential and physics program, in particular, particularly rich and compelling for what we call the integrated program, the baseline, first uh, plus and minus collider uh, followed by, by Adron Collider, um, with a credible and realistic layout of the various machines option and realistic uh, parameters with a deep understanding of the technical challenges, but also with a clear view of the uh, R&D work that is needed in order to uh, accomplish the, the project. So what is the next step? As you know, we are all very much engaged in the um, update of the European strategy for particle physics. The deliberation are expected at the end of January 2020 and the Council will, uh, will endorse uh, the strategy in, in May. As I have uh, mentioned several times, uh, I think it's important that uh, the strategy gives a clear indication about a future collider in Europe at CERN, linear, between linear and circular. Uh, this is very important in order to be able to focus our efforts, to focus our resources, and to do uh, the necessary preparation work to possibly start construction of the next facility before the end of the next decade, so that this facility can run in the early 40s, so that the gap between the end of Illuminos DLHC and beginning of the next facility is minimized. And the preparatory work to be done uh, until the end of the uh, mid, uh, say mid end of next decade, so by the next update of the European strategy around 2026, is really uh, broad and difficult and challenging, so it's of course financial work, funding, uh, having a scheme for funding the next facility because the uh, next facility cannot be funded fully from the CERN budget, it will require funding from other sources, so a lot of creativity and uh, you know, a new paradigm also from the point of view of funding. It will be geological and civil engineering work, it will be administrative work because building a big collider in a highly populated region like the Geneva uh, region and uh, France was in, is not obviously, is not, is not obvious. It will require technical work, of course, for the machine and, uh, and uh, physics uh, exploration work. It will require communication work. It's very important to, uh, you know, get the support of the public, get the support of the authorities and politicians and get the support, which is perhaps the most difficult thing of scientists from other disciplines. So we should be, you know, be able to communicate the excitement for the physics goal and also for the technologies that we are going to develop and their impact on society. And there will be a lot of preparatory work to build a global project. We are, of course, used to international project. The RHC is an international project. The FCC collaboration, Michael will show it later on, is, a, is an international, as strong international support. But uh, the realization of such a project re requires really a new governance, a new global governance, and we have to start to think about it. Okay, so these are general terms. Let's now assume for a moment, at least for this week, that the European strategy will recommend FCC, because if the recommends click, we can go home uh, immediately. So let's assume that it will be FCC, and now what I will say is in the framework of FCC. Okay, of course, at face value, FCC looks mission impossible. It's a daunting project, it's a scary project, pretty much like the LHC in the mid 80s. People were scared about it, took, they thought it will never ever happen. However, mission has been accomplished and you know very well, the LHC in terms of accelerators, experiments and computing has overperformed. There is essentially no single parameter where we have not done better than foreseen. So this speaks, of course, to the competence, to the dedication of the, of the community. Uh, also, the project is daunting. However, let me stress that the only way for humanity to 
push back the limit of knowledge and to make great progress is through difficult, um, challenging, and brave initiatives. Uh, the knowledge of hum uh, humanity needs brave projects and brave people. I was, in, um, I was in London a few weeks ago and I visited the Science Museum. And one of the fantastic objects they have there, I don't know if you have been there, it's the capsule of the Apollo 10. So you go there, you expect something super high tech, and you see a little object, half of this podium, not really high tech, almost uh, uh, you know, scotch tapes on it, and you say, I will never ever put my finger into it. And three brave people gone into this thing and accepted to be thrown in outer space without knowing if they will come back. So this is really how humanity goes, moves forward, and how the knowledge of humanity is, uh, it pro progresses. We need brave projects and we need brave people. And I think we are brave people because, not, because we are not scared by, by, uh, by challenges. Now, let me say that uh, if I look at the FCC, and without being too arrogant, I think that perhaps the best place, but perhaps, without perhaps, the best place to realize it is at CERN and in Europe. Of course, with a strong collaboration of partners from all over the world. So why at CERN and in Europe? Because in Europe, we have the expertise uh, that we have developed over years of uh, activities uh, in this field. We have uh, the knowledge, we have the infrastructure, okay? No lab in the world has the uh, accelerator infrastructure and other infrastructure, technical infrastructure as, as CERN has, but also because we have the values. We have the values of open science, accessible to everybody. We have the values of sharing knowledge. We have the values uh, of global collaboration. And we have been trained in working in this, with these values now for, for decades. Um, if I look back at the origin of CERN, you all know that CERN was founded in 1954. Um, following the, the push and the initiatives of um, visionary scientists and politicians with a twofold goal on one end of, bring, of bringing back scientific and research excellence in Europe after the war, where many, many brains had migrated in, uh, in other uh, regions of the world, but also to promote uh, peaceful collaboration among European countries after the, disasters, uh, after the disasters of the war. So those people understood that science and research is the foundation of economic development, of progress, and of peaceful collaboration. So I think that over the decades, well, I think our, our, uh, our uh, founding fathers will be very proud to see what CERN has become 60 years later, what we have done in science, and what we have done in promoting peace, not only in Europe, but also across uh, the world, and bringing together people from, from all countries. So I think that it's very important that we maintain in Europe a prominent role in fundamental science, the role that we have gained now over the decades, a prominent role in fundamental science and a prominent role in, in the values of humanity. So um, I think, I hope that this week will be um, another step forward toward this goal and I wish you very fruitful meetings and, um, and discussions. Thank you. <laughs>